Hello, my name is David Eberts, and it is time to look at the GAL4 mechanisms. I say this is probably the most complicated one, only because the book has very jumbled sentences and you really need to dissect it to find out what it means. But let's do it right now. Let's start off with saying what type of experiment GAL4 is. Well, it can actually be used for two different things. It can be used for a move it or a find it. And that's where things get complicated. It can be used in two different types of techniques that the book goes over that if you aren't strict and paying attention, you will get lost. So I'm going to hopefully walk through this as smoothly as possible to help understand GAL4. GAL4, once again, is going to help in the sense of move it with uh, expression and target expression. So we're going to first target on, we're going to first look into the move it method of GAL4 and how it works. GAL4 of itself, well let's first start with this target, targeted expression. GAL4 is a transcription factor. That's an important thing to know. It can promote transcription of genes that have a GAL4 binding site. So let's say we have a gene right here, 5 prime, 3 prime as always, and we have gene X. If there is a region of a promoter, a promoter or enhancer region that GAL4 can bind to, so GAL4 binding site, whenever the protein of transcription factor GAL4 is present, it will come and do exactly what a transcription factor does. It will promote transcription of downstream gene X. That's the very basic concept that you need to understand before we move forward that it can bind to any site that has a GAL4 binding site and push its expression. But how can we use target expression? As mentioned in other videos, target expression is a way to do a move it and introduce any gene that we want at any place or any time depending on the mechanism. GAL4 can be used as target expression through that exact mechanism. So let's say we want to introduce, uh, let's go with hunchback. Let's keep it normal. Something we've talked about. Hunchback is the protein we want to express. What we're going to do is take our construct that we make, 5 prime, 3 prime. We have a coding region that is coding for hunchback. And we make sure to put in a region of the coding strand that can bind to GAL4, GAL4 binding site. So great. So that means whenever we put it into the fly, or Drosophila, that's what we'll say for this time, hunchback will be promoted and expressed whenever GAL4 binds to it. Now there's two different ways this event could happen. One is where the fly has endogenous GAL4. So that means that GAL4, let me back up, GAL4 is expressed in flies, but not universally, not everywhere. So that means if we insert this hunchback construct with the GAL4 binding site, it's only going to produce hunchback. I'm going to write it in blue. It'll only produce hunchback maybe here and maybe part in the head, hunchback. It's only going to produce it wherever GAL4 is usually in, this, in the fly. So method one is putting in a hunchback construct that will be activated wherever there is endogenous and endogenous uh, GAL4. However, the other way is what if we don't have endogenous GAL4 
and we want it, and we want to control where it's expressed. In this way, in this type of target expression, we're putting in a hunchback wherever GAL4 is being uh, produced. So in that sense, we can't control it that much. Now let's say we do want to control it. Well, what we can do is along with our construct of GAL4 binding site, we could put in a secondary construct that produces GAL4. So we'll have coding region for GAL4 in another construct. And then the way to get it expressed, of course, is we need enhancers or some type of promoter right here that will drive the expression of GAL4. So we draw our fly once again. And what we can do is then, from knowledge of the fly's development and everything, is make sure that whatever promoter we use, it is a promoter whose protein is known. So let's say promoter, we're going to call it X. We know exactly where X is made inside the fly during development or anything. So let's say that X is produced all throughout here. So that way, we can control the hunchback expression by putting in two constructs, this construct and our original hunchback construct. So we'll put in one construct, and it'll drive the promotion of GAL4. And then the second construct, you know what? Let me blow this fly up real quick. This fly then went to McDonald's every day of its life, and is giant. And we have our GAL4 being produced, GAL4, leading to GAL4 protein, which can then act as a transcription factor for hunchback, and lead to the production of our hunchback protein, our targeted expression. So those are two different ways of how we can overexpress or selectively express our protein of interest. One is kind of a laid back way of doing endogenous GAL4, and then the other way is by putting in two constructs, one that will make our transcription factor, and then subsequently will come down and promote our hunchback transcription uh, construct. And to look at that a little bit better without the bloated fly over here, so this is our second fly, let's remember. Wow, I just realized that I wrote one again. I apologize. Two. In our second scenario, we said that hunchback, sorry, we said that our promoter X is only expressed down here in this part of the fly. So what that means is that we know that GAL4 is only going to be expressed down here. We will have HBs all over here and nowhere else. Even though we put it into the entire fly, it'll only be expressed where transcription factor X is present and can drive the transcription of GAL4, which can then drive the transcription of hunchback through the GAL4 binding site. And that is the way we can use GAL4 as a moved type of experiment. Does that make sense? I sure hope so. If not, I could try to clear it up later. But that's basically the gist of it, and kind of a good way to always think about it is, if you want to use it in a move it type of experiment, is going with number two, because you can control it more. And you can basically, assuming that you know full knowledge of other things inside the fly, you can make it be expressed anywhere. Say you know a promoter that's expressed in the eyes, you put all this in the eyes with a GAL4 construct that has a promoter for an eye transcription factor, and you'll subsequently get hunchback expression inside the eyes of the fly. Let's give it a nine. Now we're going to move on to the find it mechanism of GAL4. It's going to be very similar to this endogenous GAL4, so I'm going to leave that up real quick. Or maybe not. Let's see. So we are no longer 
introducing our gene of interest, our, our targeted expression. This is now a find it type of experiment to find where proteins localize. So we're going to start with our basic fly, and it's going to no longer have endogenous GAU4. And we're going to say that it has endogenous transcription factor Y. Okay, transcription factor Y. We're going to make two constructs once again. We're going to make one construct that promotes GAL4. GAL4. And the binding site is actually for transcription factor Y. So transcription factor Y, when present, will bind to this construct and create GAL4. That means, like we said earlier before, GAL4 will, will be produced wherever transcription factor Y is present in the, in the creature. What we do now is insert a second construct once again that has a GAL4 binding site, binding site, uh, 5 prime, 5 prime, 3 prime, 3 prime. But downstream of the GAL4 binding stripe, what we're going to put there, and I wish I had a green marker, but we are going to put GFP. So that means whenever we have both of these constructs present, along with transcription factor Y, it'll drive the expression of GAL4, which will then come and bind onto the second construct, which will drive the expression of GFP. And as we know, GFP is green fluorescent protein. Fluorescent things fluoresce. They are shiny and bright and happy. Now let's look at what this leads to in a result in our fly. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So we have our fly. Here's the head. All right, I apologize, got a call that interrupted me, but let's jump right back into it. So now we have our fly, and we know in the fly that there's endogenous transcription factor Y. I apologize if I noted earlier that we know where transcription Y is. We do not. This is a way to find it now. We are now looking at a find it type of experiment. Find it. And we want to find where in the fly transcription factor Y is normally expressed. So like with move it's and lose it's, we're changing the normal thing. Find it's, we're not changing anything. We're leaving it normal and looking because we want to find where transcription Y is. So let's make it a little more interesting. Make these legs a little more realistic. I mean, it doesn't get much more realistic than that. And let's give it an I. So, basically what we know is when we put in both of these constructs, we'll put both of these in to the fly during development, and then at one point in time, fix the fly. And what's going to happen is wherever transcription Y is present, it will drive expression of GAL4, which will come and drive expression of GFP, and thus, only in that domain, will GFP be present and fluoresce. So let's say then over on our fly that transcription factor Y is expressed posteriorly. So that's one domain. And let's say it's in the anterior legs and also in the eye. So we don't know this. We're trying to figure this out. But let's say that where transcription factor Y normally is expressed are in those three regions. That means once we're done with this experiment, we put both of the constructs in the embryo, it develops, and then we finally fix it and look at the embryo. What we will see is we will have GFP, let's erase these red, we will have our GFP lit up only in the regions where we can now know transcription factor Y is present. Unfortunately, green fluorescent protein is going to be blue right now. But that's all we can work with. So we see a fluorescence of green, of green fluorescent protein 
in our eyes, our anterior legs, and the posterior region right there. And this is a way we can almost create a profile, and we can now call this a transcription factor Y profile. And people have done this, you can read it in your book, they've done this in many different ways and have created whole catalog models for any type of protein inside the cell and to see where it is by using this kind of indirect method of fluorescing wherever transcription factor Y is present. And you can go in your book and look and see the fluorescence pictures and they are really cool and it's a good way of creating models of finite experiments to know exactly where transcription factor Y lo is localized to in our model, in our system. Those are the two ways GAL4 is used throughout our book and our knowledge. Both of them are kind of complex, so make sure to go over it and you understand it. The move it one is probably a lot more interesting and can be used more. For findings like this, I think it's a lot better to use in situ hybridization or immunohistochemistry than doing this method. This is probably harder, but once again, you never know what situation you may need to do this in. And that about covers it for now. I hope that was helpful. Thank you. One more thing I wanted to mention that, no, never mind.